Maybe one way that we can describe about how to see the world differently is to go back through history. 350 years ago, there was a crazy Dutch scientist called Anton van Leeuwenhoek, and he was completely bonkers. Because for about 10 years of his life, he was writing scientific papers around how he saw small things moving in water. And clearly, if we had some water right now, and we looked at the water, we would see nothing. Well, eventually, um, Sir Isaac Newton was one of the, the members of the Royal Society. A group of eminent society um, scientists went to visit this crazy man in his laboratory in Delft. And when they got there, they discovered that this man had invented the microscope. The small things had always been there. But we as humans at that time did not have the eyes nor the lens to see them. What I think we're beginning to see right now is almost new ways of looking at the world. Um, I've got a background around complex systems, networks, this kind of thing, and they give us a much better explanatory power about how the world works. Well, what that begins to get us into then is also when people have these new things coming in, how do we make change also across systems as well? And so with that, our last session today is going to be Tamás, who'll be talking to you about uh, creating a digital single market for uh, European depositors. Many thanks. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. Um, so, first of all, my name is Thomas. I'm uh, originally from Georgia, from uh, in Caucasus. So, even farther east than Bulgaria, and uh, still not a EU member. One of the reasons I'm a big fan of Europe, uh, and uh, uh, I'm a, uh, intrinsically a pro-European guy. Uh, the second thing is, I wanted to ask you how many of you actually have a bank deposit. So, I have a bank deposit. Probably almost everyone has a bank deposit. And it's a boring topic, actually. Bank deposits has always been, for the last several hundred years, exactly the same as it was. But at the same time, it's very relevant. So if you look at the European market, then uh, Europeans in total have 10 trillion uh, of private household wealth in deposits, in bank deposits. Uh, and uh, imagine, uh, because of the low interest rate environment, it's uh, almost uh, zero interest rate on it. So average rates pay to depositors is 0.64% currently uh, in Europe. So this is actually obvious. What is less obvious is that Europe is not an integrated market at all. So if you look at uh, some countries, then uh, in Baltics, for example, the rates would be 11 times lower than in Slovakia for some reason. Uh, so those markets are segregated. And even worse, if you look on the right side to Germany, then uh, the largest banks in Germany would uh, pay uh, you uh, 30 times less than the best offers on the market. Uh, three zeros, so 30 times. It's, uh, it means that the market is not really working because that price differentiation cannot persist in other areas. So if you have a mobile phone which you buy, there cannot be a provider which is the largest, which takes 30 times more than the other provider. So uh, the market is broken. What have we created out of it uh, is actually first way for customers to open accounts across borders uh, easily, uh, online, uh, and um, until then, what was the case is that actually a customer, uh, if he wanted to become a, a bank customer, a depositor, he needed to travel a lot. So first time he would go to a bank branch in another country, uh, uh, um, uh, introduce himself, he would get access in another language, he would go back to close the deposit, so all this travel and uh, unnecessary task stuff we decided to eliminate. Uh, and uh, by now we have uh, 15 banks from 12 countries introduced into our system. And uh, for the customer, it's very simple. It's one interface, one online banking, one login, and he can uh, close, open, uh, uh, shift deposits from one bank to another, uh, take out interest. Also, his tax process is completely supported. So a very convenient customer solution. But of course, a marketplace would not work if uh, uh, we do not create a solution for the banks as well. And for the banks, um, uh, imagine Europe, it's uh, actually uh, 29 countries in uh, one single uh, uh, capital uh, uh, union or capital uh, uh, area, and, uh, but still they face a lot of challenges to go outside of their home com country. So there are regulatory requirements, language barriers, flexibility, setup costs, uh, KYC rules according to the domestic rules, and so on and so on. And we actually 
take all those uh, difficulties out. So we are on a, another side a servicer to banks, which allows them to do business in uh, uh, in pretty uh, much almost all uh, European countries at the same time. So where 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 we have uh, what have we achieved until now? Uh, we launched our platform in Germany only. So uh, the whole history is actually uh, Germany in December 2013 with our first partner, FeeBank, which is uh, a sponsor here as well. Uh, and uh, uh, since then, we have introduced actually 15 banks on the platform and brokered more than 1 billion euro of deposits uh, to European uh, banks. Uh, we've grown actually fast, faster than uh, the largest uh, uh, asset-based uh, fintech player, Wealthfront. Uh, and uh, we have until now more than 40,000 uh, customers uh, online who do banking business through us and with us. Um, and uh, uh, actually, uh, to give you a bit of a background about the team and uh, what we have created, the team is uh, still very small, so we're 60 people, all based in Berlin, uh, and uh, uh, are backed by a couple of uh, VC investors, uh, biggest of them being Index Ventures from London and uh, Ribbit Capital from California. So, so far, so good. Um, um, a Berlin-based company giving German customers access to uh, higher interest rate accounts. Uh, our second part, uh, one of our other partners, actually another Bulgarian bank, uh, Bulgarian American Credit Bank. Uh, and we have a lot of other banks, uh, Alio from Poland, Nordax from Sweden, and so on and so on. So, so far, so good. Uh, but uh, the biggest step which we introduced just 10 days ago which is, I hope, relevant for you, is that we uh, launched actually our first pan-European platform also for the customers. So not only for banks, but now customers can be, become our customers from 31 countries. Uh, so um, any of you, I hope, so from Bulgaria, from UK, from Sweden, from whenever, you can uh, open an account with us, uh, which is available to 500 million customers exactly in the same way, so it's exactly the same interface. Uh, in uh, cooperation and partnership with Key Trade Bank uh, from Belgium. So we uh, have uh, one bank, of course, which services those accounts and uh, which takes care of the banking operations together with us. And through that bank, we can, uh, we can onboard customers from all European countries, uh, which is uh, for us, a, uh, of course, a big achievement and uh, something we worked on for 18 months. So with an involvement of regulators, outside auditors, and, uh, and so on and so on. So, so far, so good, but uh, what are the next steps, uh, what we're doing currently? So our vision is actually to create uh, uh, a fully integrated open platform, both for depositors, but also for banks and for financial intermediaries. Uh, meaning that actually for the, we do not care about the customer front end. Customer can become our customer through his primary online banking or through his financial advisor. We started that in Germany, so we're cooperating with nine uh, broker networks in Germany already. And we're launching cooperations with two banks, which we'll announce soon, so that customers would not need to leave their online banking interface there, but can pick up our product partners from that online banking, and we take care of the, uh, of the whole process of de deposit opening and, uh, and uh, uh, administration. The next thing we are uh, talking about is, of course, it's all in English language, so it will be not relevant for many people. Uh, let's take the market friends. Um, uh, a majority of French either do not speak or do not want to speak uh, English, especially when they are interacting uh, online with the platform. So we will be launching country-specific platforms. So French platform will go live this quarter, where actually French customers will be able to interact in French language with French customer service uh, and uh, open up uh, deposit accounts in all European countries. The next one is we do not want customers to be uh, stick on, sticking only to this a uh, very conservative deposit product. We are opening also the platform for new types of savings uh, accounts. Uh, we have by now term deposits and overnight deposits, but very soon uh, more capital market, more risky products will appear also on the platform where the customer can do a multi-asset, multi-provider selection of the products uh, uh, on that one. Um, the next thing is we have until now four currencies live. So if you have Bulgarian lever, you can deposit through our platform with FIBANK in Bulgarian lever, which is a great thing. Uh, but uh, also we have Norwegian krona, we have US dollar deposits, but we'll be adding new currencies, especially British pound and Swedish krona will be the next currencies coming live to the platform so that the customers can deposit in any currency they want to choose actually. Of course, with the backing of the uh, deposit insurance. And the uh, very last thing is, uh, I mentioned that already, uh, many of our customers, or so our customers are old, even, I would say, uh, definitely older than me and much older than you. So uh, they are on average 55, and many of them in, are still in an offline world. So they would not trust 
an online platform to do business for them. So that's why we are cooperating and integrating with offline world as well, so with financial advisors and uh, getting into their tools and into the financial advisory process so that customers can choose us from there as well. So to summarize this quickly, um, we are actually uh, the uh, uh, European platform allowing savers to deposit their savings with any bank in the European Union, which is a great per se. Plus, we have achieved something in Europe which was never there before. So, for example, uh, we've uh, introduced the first time a Bulgarian bank offered its product in Germany. It was uh, with our help and with us. First time a Polish bank offered uh, its products at all in Germany was with us. Same Portugal, same Croatia, same uh, Ireland. Uh, uh, first time a Croatian bank ever passported to a foreign country was with us. Same with a Romanian bank. So we have uh, facilitated a lot of uh, cross-border business and hope to do it much, much more in the future because there is no reason uh, to stick always with the bank at your corner which has a branch by occasion and where by occasion you have opened an account some time ago. So much more choice for the customers and we are of course very, well, uh, very happy to welcome you soon at our platform. You can open an account in five minutes without any video or without any face-to-face uh, -face, uh, identification. So that's it on my side. I'm ahead of time so we have more time for questions. Yes, so definitely. So we are regulated. So we uh, do not have a license. So it's market by market. It's different because we do call for our activities, brokerage activity. And regulation of brokerage activity is a national regulation. Uh, so in Germany, if you uh, broker deposits, for example, because deposits are safe products, uh, you do not need a license. So you can do it without a license. Uh, no capital requirements, no license. You can do it with a one-man shop. Um, in France, we do uh, need a license and we do need an insurance of the company and a director with financial education and so on. We have that in France, for example. But it's very much national individual thing. On the other side, we're also outsourcing provider to banks. So on that side, we need to fulfill much more regulation. Because as soon as we enter into outsourcing contracts, for example, our online banking, we're not, uh, we're not uh, uh, able to operate online banking in our own name. So we have a bank which outsources this to us. And there we are part of the... Uh, of the normal banking regulation because it's, uh, we're subject to it as well as an outsourcer. Yes? Two quick questions. So the first one, uh, does the, the deposit insurance threshold of 100,000 apply also to deposits that you are brokering? Yes, so for every customer, it applies for every bank 100,000 euro at least. Some, some higher exem exceptions are there. For example, Norway has 220,000. Um, but other than that, for every customer and for every deposit it applies. So if you have much more than 100,000, then it's a very convenient solution. You can spread your deposits on one platform and still all of them are protected. Okay. The second question, I mean, I'm sure you have thought about this risk factor, but I mean, in general, if you do that long time, what happens is there is a huge capital outflow from markets with high credit rating which inversely they have relatively low interest rates towards markets with lower credit rating and high interest rates. So, I mean, to name the markets like Germany, France, for example, there would be capital outflows from these markets and capital inflows in other markets, which are, let's say, like Southern European markets. I mean, obviously at some point in time, this might be too much. So do, don't you think that at that point in time, countries like Germany and France will kind of say, well, that was fine, but let's stop it, and they would implement some type of capital controls? Yeah. Um, so a good question. So maybe relating to the first question in terms of risk for the customer, we also limit on the platform amount which customer can deposit per bank. So automatically, if you do even five deposits with the same bank, you are capped at 100,000. So you are not allowed to do more than 100,000 with any single bank. Now to the systematic risk which our platform is causing or not causing. First thing is I'm a libertarian person, so I don't believe in uh, states defining what is the right level of capital flows and what is not. Uh, so, uh, so people should decide and should vote by their feet. The second thing is, um, actually funny enough, it's not only that direction. So for example, as we were launching in Europe, we had a lot of uh, inquiries from 
Cyprus or from Bulgaria, from financial agents saying their customers want to have this product. Please, can we give it to them because they want to deposit with German banks at much lower rate? So as, as, as you have rate-hungry customers in Germany, you would have some rate uh, rates, so not so rate-hungry, but risk-aware customers because uh, they're used to banking crisis to whatever, which want to sleep better, which want to ship out their money actually to Germany, Sweden, or wherever else. The thir third factor is, it's actually, um, I would also think it's because of risk, the rate differentiation. The uh, reality is it's not, because the question I've shown is actually Lithuania uh, against Slovakia with almost the same rating with 11 times difference. Uh, so if you take, for example, Germany, uh, Germany has uh, four or five times higher rates, both best rates and average rates than Luxembourg, which is also a AAA rated country. Uh, so it depends on many, many factors, like how uh, big is the market, is it oligopolistic or not? Is there total overhang in deposits or not? Germans are great savers, there is a deposit overhang of almost one, billion, one trillion euro in the market, so we have 800 billion euro, too much money. That's why this Landesbanken were exporting the money to the US subprime and to all the other countries. So there are a lot of other factors beyond the uh, rating of the country, why the rates are different. And then I would say let customers decide, we're so small with one billion, uh, we can have this conversation when we're 100 billion, then we will sit together with the regulator and discuss the capital controls. Very good. Thank you very much.